just for the sake of completeness i'm just going to explain you uh, the theory behind the eigen vectors and eigen values but in gate exam or any competitive exam whichever you are trying to write uh, they will ask you only the numerical questions from this topic so once i take the numerical questions that examples you will understand this topic better but before that just for the sake of completeness it is not important it is not necessary that you understand this even without understanding whatever i am going to say now you can directly jump into the examples and you will understand everything as we do more and more examples but just for the just to understand what is the background of this we we shall see this theory it, it doesn't take a lot of time i'll just explain you so what i'll do is i'll just tell you how this theory is developed and then i'll tell you why eigen vectors are important and later i'll tell you some terminology like eigen vectors are also sometimes called as characteristic you know vectors or eigen values are called as characteristic values or characteristic roots therefore i'll tell you the theory behind it first and then the terminology and then we can go with the examples and from examples you can understand everything okay so just see this now let capital a be a n by n n road square matrix which means a is a n by n matrix okay and capital x equal to see this n by 1 matrix which means it is a column vector right be a column vector now we have a square matrix and a column vector we have two matrices okay consider the equation ax equal to lambda x which means you take the vector a matrix a and multiply with the column vector x see a is n by 1 n by n matrix right and now i am multiplying with a column vector which is nothing but n by 1 matrix then what is the output output should be a vector column vector isn't it output should have the dimensions n by 1 okay now consider this equation a into x equal to lambda into x where lambda is a scalar if lambda is a scalar and x is a uh, column vector if i multiply lambda with x then again i am going to get a column vector only isn't it therefore the dimensions of left hand side is going to be n by 1 and dimensions of the right hand side is also going to be n by 1 so just consider this equation if you can find such a value of x and such a value of lambda then what we can say is this entire matrix a can be somehow represented with this uh, simple uh, simple uh, you know uh, the value lambda that is the meaning of it or you know instead of having this particular or we can say that the characteristic of this uh, matrix is nothing but the value lambda okay so don't worry about this <coughs> with example it will be clear so why are we using this is in some physics applications we have some applications of this in physics right and there we you know when we are trying to solve some equations we'll generally use this instead of using this entire matrix here we they generally use the characteristic value lambda and later in some in some fields in computer science also we started using this especially in machine learning in matlab sometimes we need it so why we need it there they'll explain you now we are just you know designing this entire theory to solve it later what are the applications in those particular uh, subjects you'll learn about it and that is out of the scope of this uh, particular gate syllabus okay so what you should understand is a is a square matrix and x is a vector and now i'm trying to write this equation ax equal to lambda x but then is it possible to write such an equation that depends what you should be able to find out the value of a lambda which is a scalar and you should be able to find out the value of this vector x a vector x is nothing but x1 x2 so on xn which means you should be able to find out all these values x1 to xn and you should be able to find out the lambda then only we can say that the lambda is characteristic of a okay so okay let, let's go ahead and discuss about it now if you see this equation ax equal to lambda x what are the values of x that will straight away satisfy this equation of, of course you can directly see that if x equal to a null matrix then a into x is nothing but a null matrix which is nothing but n by 1 that null vector and here also if x is a null vector then lambda into x is also a null vector therefore straight away you can see that for x equal to 0 this equation will be satisfied but then x equal to 0 that null matrix is not of uh, you know uh, huge importance right what i wanted to see is 
if there exists any non-zero matrix x and some value lambda for which this equation will be satisfied that is what i wanted to find out okay so in order to see that i not to find out those two things what are the two things that i wanted to find out non-zero value of lambda and then some vector x in such a way that this equation be satisfied i want to find it out in order to find it out i want to solve it solve this equation right so what are the things that i wanted to solve from this equation i wanted to know from this equation one is what are all the values of lambda and what are all the values of x for which this equation can be satisfied okay that is the entire theory behind it and now in order to solve it <coughs> let's introduce i i is a unit va unit vector or unit matrix not a vector unit matrix so let us say a x equal to lambda x we know it now in place of in before x i'll place i so multiplying anything with i doesn't change anything so i into x is equal to x itself therefore see this now um, so i'll just read it out and explain you x equal to 0 is a solution of the equation 1 let's call this as equation 1 we know that x equal to 0 is of course a solution if you substitute x equal to 0 here and x equal to 0 here both sides i get 0 therefore it is always always a solution for any value of lambda now let's see whether there exists scalars lambda and a non-zero vector x which satisfy 1 that is what I, I i want what are the values of lambda and x for which this gets satisfied okay now in order to do that if i is a unit matrix if i is an unit matrix i'll just introduce i here so why am i doing this because i want to later you know subtract two matrices then i cannot subtract a matrix from a scalar so what i mean to say is this equation i'm going to write like this will it change anything if i introduce i here see this i is a n by 1 n by n unit matrix and it is a n by n uh, ma you know vector so result will be a n by 1 vec vector which is nothing but i therefore by writing i the equation doesn't change okay now you try to get it to the left hand side yes i i try to get it in the left hand side the reason of introducing i is so that i can write a minus lambda i into x equal to 0 without having i here i will not be able to perform this subtraction the reason is a is a matrix and lambda is a scalar a number so i cannot subtract a minus i that is why writing i is meaningful here okay fine now if you observe this one this equation this particular equation it is in the form of a x equal to 0 which you have already seen it right so this is in the form of linear homogeneous equations and we know that if it is a linear homogeneous equation and if the size of this x is you know n which means it is n by 1 now uh, if it is containing n, un, n unknowns of course x1 x2 so on xn is n unknowns then we know that the there will be at least one solution only if the rank of this matrix this quotient matrix is you know less than n if the rank of this quotient matrix has to be less than n then the determinant has to be zero I, I hope you remember this if you don't remember it please go back to that linear homogeneous equations and see the theory so if this particular mat if this particular equation if x is a unknown if x is having n unknowns if you have to solve them if you have to find at least one solution then the rank of a should be less than n if the rank of a has to be less than n then the determinant has to be zero which means for this equation if you are able you should if you want to find out some value of x which is non-zero okay if it is zero then it is straightforward nothing to solve if you want to find out the values of x which are non-zero then definitely the rank of this one should be less than n which means it should be a singular matrix which means a minus lambda i should be equal to zero determinant of a minus lambda i should be equal to zero so what does it mean we are supposed to find out the values of lambda for which this equation the determinant of this matrix a minus lambda i should be equal to zero then for those values of lambda we can find out the corresponding values of x okay so i don't know if you understood this entire theory but even if you don't understand the entire theory just remember that this particular equation is important
this is this is where this is from where we are going to derive the eigenvalues so given any matrix a we are going to write this one and then we are going to derive eigenvalues and from those eigenvalues eigenvalues are nothing but the values of lambda and from those eigenvalues we are going to get the eigenvectors eigenvectors are nothing but the values of x for a corresponding lambda we are going to get a x so this these points will be clear once i get into the problem so this is the background even if you don't understand it leave it next i'll tell you about the terminology that is interesting and important you just note down the terminology and later with every example all these concepts will be clear okay so now let's move on to uh, this is important okay this is important now i'll take this one and i'll explain you what are the terminologies that we use while discussing the problems related to this concept okay fine now let's see more about the terminology the matrix a minus lambda i if a is the matrix then a minus lambda i is also a matrix isn't it the matrix a minus lambda i is called the characteristic matrix of a why because it plays an important role in finding out the eigenvectors or eigenvalues therefore a minus lambda i which is acting as the quotient matrix earlier if you observe this a minus lambda i into x equal to 0 that is what we are taken therefore a minus lambda i is acting as the quotient matrix so a minus lambda i is also called as the characteristic matrix of a remember this this terminology is important okay where i is the unit matrix of order n then once you find out the characteristic matrix if you find out the determinant of that characteristic matrix so a minus lambda i if a minus lambda i is the determinant of this characteristic matrix a minus lambda i that okay like this it is nothing but it is the equation in lambda and also you can find out that it is an equation of order n so it is an ordinary polynomial in lambda of degree n so it is not an equation it is expression polynomial it is a polynomial of degree n so in examples it will be clear so even if you don't understand it here don't worry in examples it will be clear is called characteristic polynomial of a which means if you take the characteristic matrix and if you find out its determinant then the determinant is nothing but a polynomial of order n and that is called as characteristic polynomial of a okay and if you try to equate that polynomial to zero like determinant of a minus lambda I equal to zero then it is called as characteristic equation of a so this is also called as characteristic equation why because from that equation we can find out the values of lambda now roots of this equation roots of this equation which equation characteristic equation det of a minus lambda I equal to 0 see this entire concept lies in the solving this equation det of a minus lambda I equal to 0 the roots of this equation are called the characteristic roots or characteristic values or eigenvalues or latent values or proper values of the matrix these are all the names so don't get confused all of these names actually represent the same concept what is it the roots of this equation are called the characteristic roots or characteristic values or eigenvalues or latent values or proper values of the matrix a the set of the eigenvalues is called as spectrum of a okay so what i mean to say is if a is an n by n matrix and if you try to solve this equation this particular polynomial this a minus lambda i turns out to be a polynomial of degree n now if you try to solve this polynomial if you try to solve this equation then you are going to get n values for lambda okay therefore all those values put together will be called as the spectrum okay so that is not of uh, much interest here so what will be interesting is once you find out the values of lambda we are supposed to find out the values of x if you remember the value x x is nothing but we have this ax equal to lambda x isn't it so after finding out the value of the lambda substitute the value of lambda in this equation and a is already given now we are going to substitute the value of lambda then we are supposed to find out the value of x now this entire question boils down to the same same question of finding out the uh, linear uh, homogeneous equations okay the same thing will happen here 
fine so now this is how this we are going to find out the value eigen values once you find out the eigen values then we have to find out the eigen vectors what is eigen vector is series if lambda is a characteristic root of n by n matrix a what does it mean if lambda is one of the eigen values how many eigen values will be there if this is a equation of degree n then of course we are going to have n n n values for lambda therefore we are going to have n eigen values isn't it if lambda is a characteristic root of n by n matrix a then a non zero vector x such that ax equal to lambda x see this now if lambda if you found out the eigen value to be lambda then you try to substitute the value of lambda in this equation from this equation you can solve the value of x okay then that particular value of x is called characteristic value or characteristic vector characteristic vector. if you are planning to do masters then doing masters abroad is better than doing masters in india i'll give you all the reasons so first reason is out of 1 lakh students who take gate every year there are only 500 seats in old iits so all the iits put together have a acceptance rate of 0.5% and iits universities better than iits they have very good acceptance rate like 30% 40% but all the iits put together have an acceptance rate of 0.5% and if you are working hard to get into iit bombay IIT Bombay's ranking is 177 and IIT Roorkee's ranking is 400. If you are happy to get into IIT Roorkee, then getting into universities better than IIT Roorkee is easier compared to getting into IIT Roorkee. And looking at the salaries for computer science, of, uh, for software jobs, if you have done your master's in computer science in US, the salaries are ranging from 80 lakhs per year to 1.2 crore per year. So even if you take an average of 1 crore per year, your savings will be much higher than the salaries in India. After taxes and your cost of living, you can easily save 40 to 50 lakhs uh, per year. And in India, the maximum jobs that you get is around 30 lakhs. So your savings will be much greater than the salaries in India. And these are all the services that we provide. University shortlisting. So depending on your profile, we will shortlist what are the universities that you have to apply. And statement of purpose building. And then LOR guidance. And GRE and English test assistance. And education loan assistance. So you don't have to have any collateral. Which, which means without any security, now you can get education loan. Getting education loan is very simple these days. And whatever the amount fee, the amount of uh, fee that you have, you have a range of uh, universities. You can apply for 10 lakh universities, 20 lakh universities, or 50 lakh universities. But whatever it is, you are going to get complete education loan, and you can pay off your education loan in one year after you getting it, after you get a job. And then we do visa assistance, mock visa interviews, and then connecting with the university alumni. So now you might ask why we should join the more visas. So the answer is we have 90% success rate, 99% success rate. And these are all the destinations that we guide the students to. So we guide students to any country that you want to go. So now it is not just USA. We guide to UK, Germany, Australia, Canada. So we guide, we guide students to all the countries. We work with all the destinations. And if you are interested in going abroad, you have to just drop us a message on this WhatsApp number 9494 555 454. Okay, thank you.